Hello my friends. This is an American flat bow. It's a 55 pound draw weight and it can be shot right handed or left handed. And let me show you how it's made. Here are a few hickory staves for bow making and these have been rejected as far as making a bow. You can see here this one was already laid out and uh, I kind of stopped and the reason for that is an area right here this is rock so that would not have that would have failed right here. What I'm going to do rather than play with that is I want to make a takedown bow and that requires two separate halves. So with that in mind we can take one uh, rejected bow like this one from here above is bad. So that gives me a very short bow which I probably could do but it also can give me one very clean stave for taped on bow and these all are from the same log so the growth rings are going to be the same all the way around so let's choose a couple here and cut them and prep them for making the limbs of the bow for the limbs I chose these two <clears throat> okay as far as the handle um, I don't want to pay sixty to ninety dollars for a takedown handle. Um, this is a piece of stainless steel, and it's something that I could not use. It's left over from a job, and uh, it didn't cost me a penny here. Um, this is a safety handle for in a shower or restroom. Okay, this will make quite a number of handles also. So that would be five handles from this one tube. Even if you had to buy this, you're looking at roughly uh, $20 for this piece and, for, and that would be for five handles. Now you don't have to use stainless, you could use just steel, but I don't want uh, the rusting, possibility of rusting, especially if you're going to use this bow as like a prepper bow where it might be thrown in your trunk or in your backpack. Uh, and it's for a long period of time the uh, steel may rust on you. Here's my two bow staves okay, from those two pieces and these are very very hard and dense. They're, they've been drying about three years so they're really hard. And the finished bow, these are about an inch over length it should finish around 66 inches long. Okay, this tubing, I'm going to cut it and I'm using my tape as my line. Right there. Okay, I can use my angle grinder <clears throat> with a cutoff wheel, or you can try the hacksaw. So I'm going to make this five inches long. I'm going to cut it slightly over because I want to square the piece when I'm done, square both ends. So I made it about an eighth or so inches longer. I'll go around this couple times. That'll help give me a straight edge. Now I'll cut on the outside. Okay, using a hacksaw, the teeth point away from the handle. And start, use your thumbnail as a guide and draw backwards. It cuts on the forward stroke. Use the entire length of the blade. If not, you'll be dulling a center area and that will 
make the blade shorter life. When you get close to the end, it'll snap off. You don't want to do that because that will uh, leave a break and it'll leave an edge. Try to make the cut all the way through. And it gives you a minimum burr. Not perfectly square, but I'm going to square it up uh, afterwards. Here's my tube. And it's far from being square, so you're either going to have to file it square or I'm going to cut mine on the lathe. I made it just over 5 inches, it's 5 and 3 sixteenths. And the thickness outside diameter is inch and a quarter. So this is going to work fine for the handle. And like I said, almost a zero cost for this one. Okay, following the inside, turn it off. Do not do this when it's running. We need to make sure there's no burr because we have to have the wood slide in there to be able to slide in and out. There we have it. You can see here on the one end it wasn't thick enough for the handle. So simple solution, you just glue a little piece of wood to give it the dimension. It will be insignificant, you probably won't even see it when it's finished. Okay, inside the handle, the two limbs of the bow are going to join at a 45 degree angle. The reason for this is this will keep the two limbs in line on the same plane when it goes into the handle. I did not take it to a point. I left it flat. And this one has to go just the opposite The upper half will, will join and I have to make it deep enough that these 245s will mate with each other. Okay, you can hear that creaking. That's because this isn't tight enough and what I'm going to do is epoxy one limb into the handle. Uh, you don't want to epoxy both ends in because this is the intention is to be a takedown bow. And pretty good. Not too bad. Here you can see how I have the joint overlapped or overlapping at a 45 degree angle. Okay, the one that's going to be epoxied permanently into the handle is going to be this end. The reason for that, the reason that I'm doing that is 
because when you're flexing the bow, um, it's going to pull in this direction. And this will give more support for that in that direction. It will make it stronger. And this one being epoxied, there should be no movement then. Let's epoxy the one and see if it gets the uh, uh, cricking uh, sound out of the handle. When you're working with wood, you want to use epoxy resin. Epoxy resin flexes. If it's polyester resin, you don't get a flexing and it will crack. So epoxy is what you use. You want to mix this thoroughly. And this is a quicker setting one, so I'm going to work fairly quick. Now, I mark both ends with tape just to make it neater. And um, I don't want the epoxy on this until the finish is on it. Okay, now, when you do the epoxy, you want to make sure you cover all the wood. And you also want to place the epoxy on the inside of the sleeve. And the reasoning for that is when you push this in, it will be scraping the sides and it may not have the epoxy in there to do the bonding. So we'll cover all this. That's coated. Now we run a coating on the inside of the tube. And I'm going to seal this because I'm going to let this dry standing up in this fashion. My preferred finish for the bows is a shellac and you can buy it either in a liquid form. I buy the shellac chips or flakes and you mix it with alcohol. With this you can mix up a volume for a particular use. Sometimes you want to mix this up hours ahead, possibly the day before. Let it sit overnight. It takes a while for the chips to fully dissolve. If you want the dimensions for the limbs, just look up my American Flatbow video and that will give you all the dimensions for making these limbs. Okay, the bow has been shellac and the lower section was epoxied into the handle and by doing this it eliminated the creaking noise that it was making, which would not be acceptable for hunting. Okay, 
bow's not finished. I still have the paracord as a cord. Um, before the bow can be shot a lot, it needs to be broken in. And to do that, you need to shoot about a, or flex it about a hundred times at a lower uh, distance, lower pull. I'm letting the arrow rest on my hand. I need to do an arrow rest on it, finish the handle. Any new bow that I make or arrow, I always shoot at a close range because that, sometimes I have no idea where that arrow is going to go. So here I'm only about 15 feet from the target. Here I drilled a hole in a block of uh, walnut and uh, the hole is the size, a little bit loose, the size for the collar or the stainless sleeve. And what I'm going to do now is shape this into an arrow rest and epoxy it onto the tube. I tilted the rest so it's not 90 degrees, it's tapered. And I'm going to sand this to a taper. Additional sanding, see so I've tapered it. And what I want to do is Epoxy this onto the hand grip and this will make it either left-handed or right-handed shooting. It's going to go approximately there. This will be covered with leather, same with this lower section, and the walnut will be left natural finish. This finish is epoxy mixed with alcohol, so it makes it a real thin coating. It will penetrate into the wood. then it should be covered with a varnish to make it UV resist. But this, this makes it a waterproof uh, finish. The tape will keep the body putty from sticking to the wood. Here I'm going to uh, <coughs> make the handle a comfort grip. So I sanded this and there's no oil on it. So there should be not a problem with any of this sticking. I'm using uh, body putty, but this Bondo and uh, this is engineered to stick to metal for your car. So when you mix this up, you want to take approximately the volume of a golf ball and to that you mix 
one inch length of hardener. Here's the hardener. And what I mean by one inch, as you squeeze this out, there's about an inch. Okay, mix this until it's a uniform color. And right here is where I put that tape. Kind of waiting for this to start heating up and hardening. You can do this in layers and you won't be struggling with it like this. Set up pretty quick. These serif foams work real good for roughing it in. Still hot. It heats up as it's Curing, it's a chemical reaction, making this symmetrical so it can be used left or right hand shooting. We'll get it close with this, then we'll hit it with sandpaper, get it real smooth. Then we're going to cover it with leather, and you'll never know that body putty was used on the handle. Hitting this with 80 grit, we don't need any finer because we're going to adhere leather and the 80 grit will give it more bonding surface. Real nice. You can remove this. left hand or right hand. Contact cement. Coming up part way up the wood block. Set that aside, let that dry. and apply it to the leather. And we let that dry to where you can touch it and it's no longer tacky. Okay, now when this touches, it sticks.
here the handle is finished, the bow is finished, and everything's dry. So here's a close up. Together. Ready to try. Here's 29 or 28 inches. Twenty-eight inches. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.